Jim here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a story, a very serious story. This is as close to a dive fatality that I think my group has ever come. No one was hurt in the end, which was great. I'm going to tell you a story about a dive gone wrong in the island of Mikamoto. Okay, today the outline is we're going to be talking about the dive location itself, which is Mikamoto. We're going to be talking about uh, advanced diver and what that means, because that reflects on this dive. Uh, we're going to talk about the dive group and the mix, because that had a hand in this incident as well. The dive briefing, which is where it all started to go wrong. The dive itself, the aftermath of the dive, because the dive weekend continued, and there was an aftermath, and that was interesting. And then the aftermath of the aftermath. So after the dive weekend itself, the implications continued as they do today. Let's get started. First, I want to talk about the dive location. Dive location is called Mikomoto, Mikomoto, and not to be confused with Mikimoto. Mikimoto, many of you have probably heard of, is the Pearl Island, where the famous Mikimoto pearls come from. And I have no idea where that is, probably down south. Mikomoto is off the southern tip of the Izu Peninsula, off Shimoda. Shimoda, where the, the black ships came to Japan originally, I think. So Mikomoto is nothing but a very small lighthouse island on some pinnacles, some craggy, rocky pinnacles that come up off the deep ocean floor. I don't know how deep, probably like a kilometer deep or something crazy. And those pinnacles are hit, washed by deep ocean currents. Uh, one of the currents that they're hit by are the, the Kuroshio, uh, the black current that uh, brings the warm water and hammerheads. Deep water currents where they come up and hit pinnacles, always uh, a wellspring of life. Also, uh, these currents bring serious issues for boats, for divers. That location, depending on the depending on the moon cycle, it can be a crazy roller coaster ride, and it, it can be as, as flat as a pond as well, depending on those currents. And I've had both. The rules of the location, the dive operators there are very very strict. The pinnacles themselves are about a 20 minute boat ride out there, and like I said. It's, it's open ocean, so it's, uh, it's waves, it's wind, it's currents, and there's fishing boats, there's dive boats, divers. Uh, it's a crazy location. The rules are you have to be advanced diver and I believe 50 dives minimum, and they're pretty strict about that. And there's fatalities there, not every year, but every year or two, every couple years, there, there's a fatality there. There was just a fatality last, last year. People, people getting lost, swept away by the current, uh, hit by boats. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff that goes on. It's a very tense, tense dive in, in, in some respects. Also, the way the currents are, I remember one time I, I was on the boat, I, I had a call a dive for myself, my, my neck seal ripped, and I was there, and it's a huge boat, the dive boat, maybe 60 people go in. Choo, 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 choo. They all go in, and the dive time is limited to 45 minutes, and 45 minutes later, the divers were spread across the horizon. That's how crazy the, the current just spreads people out. It's, it's incredible. Have to have an SMB, have to launch, should come up in, uh, in, in groups of five, six, seven. They want your whole group to come up. Advanced diver, what does it mean? This is a perfect situation to talk about that. My advanced training, generally, you know, I try to give divers as varied a plate as, as they can get, but you can't do everything. And actually, I mean, the minimum for, for advanced training is something like five dives. So. You know, how much how much variety can you give somebody really? So it would be great to you know have some serious boat dive current off the chart dive for someone, but you know it doesn't happen for the training all the time. So my, my training is, is typically a place that does not have current. What does it mean? You know, someone who has an advanced certification, they've dove some deep dives, maybe 30 meters plus, and they come to somewhere where depth is infinite, possibly, currents could be ripping off the chart. You know, what, what prepares someone for that other than, you know, a, a car that they have in a briefing? It, it's a question to be asked, which is why on serious dives, usually operators will want to see your logbook. Have you had comparable depth? Have you had comparable um, current, etc. The dive group. That day, what I had was I had me as a dive leader. I had another dive master, a great dive master. You know who you are. I miss you a lot. He was a great dive master. Still is somewhere. And then I had, you know, some advanced divers and one one diver was was new new to that group actually a couple were, were new to that level that was my group now, i forget how many total it was it was probably including me like six seven something like that the briefing now 
This, uh, the boat is a very interesting boat. Like I said, it's, it's a huge boat. The back has a lift gate that uh, holds, I think, six divers at a time. It's the most luxurious thing in the world. First thing is the, the captain will drive out there, and it's a beautiful, beautiful ride out. You've got flying fish, large flying fish coming off you. You've got this time. You see this little lighthouse island coming up on you in the distance. Captain gets there. Captain parks in a, in a wake zone where somewhere where it's not hit by current. He's looking at the island. He's looking at the currents. I don't know what he's looking at. He, he's sizing things up, and then he calls up all the dive leaders, the, the, boat, the boat dive leader and the dive leaders of the individual groups of which I'm one. I bring my dive master with me. He's fluent in Japanese. We go up, we get the briefing from the captain. Captain is gonna tell everybody, look, here's where the currents are running, here's where it's strong, here's, here's where it's not, here's probably where the, the hammerheads are, because usually we're there to see hammerheads. You know, here's where I'm gonna drop you. Again, review the rules of the dive, and then you run down and talk to your group and give them the individual, the individual briefing. Briefing for us was, we're gonna go down, and for example, I don't remember exactly, the current is gonna be running from east to west, so we're gonna travel west and maybe you know go perpendicular against the current a couple times, and we're, we're basically traveling with the current. And I told the folks, right, set your compass, and this is the way the current runs, because the current varies a lot, even, even by time of day. And I know I understood that briefing correctly because I had a perfectly fluent Japanese speaker with me and he understood it the same way I did. That's important. Okay, the dive. I was paired up with the least experienced diver and let me see, my dive master, he probably only had two divers with him or three. It was, wasn't a huge group. Maybe, maybe he had three divers. So maybe we were three and three, I, I forget. It's, it's not important for the moment. The entry is, is a really intense situation. So the boat, he comes around, he swings around. When he does that, everybody's lined up and ready to go like paratroopers. Right? Like you're, you're jumping out of in a, in a drop zone. He pulls the boat around, puts it there. And his goal, like in 30 seconds, go, 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 go. Everybody's out of the boat so that they, they drop in the desirable zone. They're not blown off the site out into nothingness. We pull up, we do it, bam, 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 bam. We're dropping in, my group drops down. We're, we're coming to, to down to the rocks and the rocks are about 23 to 26 meters right around there. It's, it's gonna be a deep dive. And when you get down to the rocks, you know, I'm one of the last ones down and maybe because the person I was with was a little bit, a, just a tiny bit slow for ears. I don't remember why, I was delayed. I got down there and what, I, what I'm looking at, I'm looking at these rocks and what I see is one of the divers, I'll call him Diver Z. <laughs> diver Z is especially just up in the current, just fighting the current. Other people like down, hiding, hiding away. But the current, I'm looking at my compass, look at the current. Current is running exactly the opposite to what I was told on the briefing. So all my divers think, you know, we're going to be following our compass a certain direction. You know, I forget, did I say east to west? West, roughly westerly, and their mind is probably blown because that, that is gone. Everything is exactly the opposite. And I'm coming down and just, just as I'm about to tell everybody, like, all right, cool, we'll go in the opposite direction. <laughs> Screw the dive plan. We're gonna go our own way. We, we'll, we'll be okay, you know, we'll be fine. So just as I'm about to go and communicate that and to tell Diver Z, get out of the current, you know, Diver Z. As I was doing this, I get grabbed by the diver I'm with. And as it turns out, that diver is in a total wide-eye panic. The, the current blew this diver's mind, started pulling me up, saying, I gotta go up, I gotta go up, I gotta go up. I was like, oh man, this is like the worst possible scenario. So I'm, I'm luckily able to catch my dive master's attention and I gave him the signal, you're, you're the leader, you know, buddy, everybody, you're the show. And I take it up with this other diver. And then, you know, we're up, we're in the current, we're blown off the pinnacles, we're gone. I'm out of the dive. Player two is, has left the game. What I find out later from the debrief is my dive master went over to Diver Z to say, hey, what, what's your air? And Diver Z had, this is like seven minutes, I don't know, into the dive, 10 minutes maximum into the dive. Diver Z has 30 bar of air left from a 200 bar tank. So I'll, I'll, I'll put a translation of what that is in. Basically, this Diver Z, he's gone through all, almost all of his tank. He's sitting at 26 meters, 
beaten in the current with nothing but 30 bar in his tank. My, my dive master comes over, finds out what his air situation, I was asking everybody, what, you know, what's your air situation, but especially him because he was working so hard, 30 bar, my dive master made the, let, let's do an air share. So he get, and this, this dive master is really good on air, better than me, I think. Gets him on an air share, just says to everybody, hey, we're going up. So calls the dive, everybody starts to go up. So they're, they're going, I don't know what rate of ascent they're going at, something very reasonable, I assume. Um, and by the time they got to the safety stop, my, my dive master's tank was down to like 30 bar from the two of them going off it, but especially from, from Diver Z. So my dive master puts, takes his regulator back, puts Diver Z back on his 30 bar, and they do the safety stop, launch, launch their SMB, and Diver Z makes it up to the surface with like, you know, just barely, probably almost zero. Uh, you know, everybody else's air was, was okay. It was, it was just this one diver, and it's a combination of this diver being a little bit big and was just sitting in the current. The aftermath, <laughs> the aftermath of that dive, the diver who was with me who bugged out, as it turns out, that diver was narked. So it was working hard, had a CO2 rush plus nitrogen and get, got narked out of uh, his or her mind and said, you know what? I'm not diving anymore this weekend. This is too intense. It, it was, it, it is, it was a strong currents, right? That, that whole weekend. The aftermath for Diver Z. So now we, we had a very small number of divers and I said, Diver Z, you, you're with me, and, and here's what I need for you to do. Let, let's call this, I don't know what happened, Let, let's call this like an, an, advanced, an advanced refresher. You are in charge of air management. So before each of these dives, you're going to decide what our turn pressure is, and you're going to be in charge of telling me when that turn pressure is arrived at, and then you and I are going to start going up. So you are driving this dive in terms of air management. We had three more dives for the weekend. One more dive that day, two more dives the next day. Each time, Diver, Diver Z was, was in charge of a portion of it, the air management portion, Diver Z was in charge of it, right? All right, so, uh, so for example, the next dive, dive two, you know, Diver Z and I talked about the likely depths that we were gonna be at, what had happened before, what's a reasonable turn pressure, Diver Z on that dive, we, we decided, okay, it's good to be conservative on that one. I think uh, 120 bar was the turn pressure, I forget. I forget the depth, it's not important. Let's just say 120 bar, a little bit more than half a tank for PSI folks out there. And I told Diver Z, I said, listen, I'm not gonna ask you, I'm not gonna ask your air pressure, so you better come up with it. You tell me when we're there. He's like, okay, okay. We go down, we do the dive. My dive master is taking care of the other people. They're all you know, doing very well. I'm just on Diver Z and you know, Diver Z and I are diving along. It's, it's great, great dive site, it's, it's amazing. And I'm not, I'm not checking Diver Z, but I'm, I'm checking my air, of course, and I'm looking. I know I do a lot better than Diver Z. I'm not great on, on air. I know I do a lot better than Diver Z. And I'm checking my air, I'm checking my air, and I'm, get, I'm getting close to 120. I'm like 130, I'm like, all right, all right. I know Diver Z has to be near 120 now. Diver Z, where's your air? And Diver's like, oh, uh, 100 bar, let's go up. I'm like, yeah, let's go up. So Diver Z blew through the air limit. We go up, you know, we're okay. Debrief again, restressing again. Diver Z, come on, man, come on. You know, get it into you, you know, air management. You are driving it. Next day, same thing for two more dives. You know, the next dive, the first dive of day two was something like 120 bar again. You know, I'm watching my air, I'm watching my air. I know my air is better than I get there. You know, again, let's say it was 120. I say, Diver Z, what is it? Oh, 90. Like, and then again on the fourth dive, blew through the air limit again. And then after that weekend, the aftermath of the aftermath is that Diver Z was no longer cleared <laughs> for deep diving with me, with my outfit, with my very, very, very small uh, operation because I I had determined that, that Diver Z was lacking a survival instinct or something. I don't know what it, what it, what, what it was. I've never seen anything like it in my life. 
What what I'm guessing, I don't know. So I did that person's advanced training. In the advance, everything was fine, but there was no current. Maybe something about moving along was task loading the person, and uh, you know, as the instructors out there, or if you were a teacher of anything out there, you know that you learn to drive, and you're you know, like when I learned to drive, right? I, learning driving is is fine, and then. The next thing I learned was stick shift on an old Volkswagen Beetle, and then once once I put this task in there, I, I was kind of forgetting some of the drive things that I was automatic on. So I was adding a new task, it task loads you. So maybe the current was task loading this person and just blowing their mind with um, air management. I don't know, but I, you know, be it as it may, I, I can't, that was as close to a near-death experience as I think I've had in my uh, diving group, and I never want to revisit something like that. To my dive master out there, you know who you are. Thank you so much. Uh, you're a star uh, for, for that one. I'll, I'll be forever grateful for you. And, uh, and so, yeah. To divers of any level out there, you know, think about what your certification was, what the dive is you're getting into, and if you're if you're up for that dive, only you ultimately can can make that kind of a decision. And if something happens, ultimately you'll you'll be the one who suffers. And and many will argue who is responsible if it's you or if it's a dive operator. But um, anyway, something to think about. So. Hope that gave you something to think about. You know, on the discussion below, please comment up. I, I'd be very, you know, interested. And there's a few topics here for me that I've thought about for more than a decade. On that, you know, what does it mean to be an advanced diver? You know, uh, you know, how do you know if an advanced diver is up for a dive or not? Who, whose job is it to de decide that? Is it the diver? Is it the dive op? Is it the dive leader? Uh, you know, anything you want to post up below, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears on that one. Thanks for joining today. You know, if, if you get something out of the videos, if it has some, some value uh, for you, some information, hit that subscribe and support the channel. All right, see you on the beach. My mom is out there. She's a subscriber to the channel. Thank you, mom, but you have to subscribe. You have to subscribe. These other guys, they don't have to subscribe.